Hello everybody, I am Jerry Ross, a Genie Vlogger, and welcome back to another Professional Genealogist Reacts. On today's video, I will be reacting to 23andMe, How Native American Am I? by Seaman Vlogger. I have not really heard of his channel before. It's actually a decently small one, 6.96 thousand subscribers. Um, when I looked, it looks like he has about five or six different DNA videos. You know, this may not be the only video of his that I, I um, re react to. It says, how Native American am I? So I assume he must be uh, Native American. If he's uh, someone who like is uh, fully Native American or believes he's fully Native American, because um, you just never know, um, you know, I would probably expect, obviously, Native American would expect Asian, which I do want to say in um, that Native American series I watched where it was like multiple videos, I was really intrigued by how there were different, um, you know, different amounts of Asian ancestry read based on the, you know, the different areas that the, 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 the people had lived. And unfortunately, a lot of people thought that when, you know, because I was like, oh, wow, you know, they thought that I didn't realize that Native Americans came from Asia through, you know, the Bering Strait. I'm no way a Native American history expert or anything like that. Um, but I did just want to mention that, that, yeah, I knew that they came from Asia. If you watch older videos of mine, I mentioned that. Um, so, but that was really intriguing to see that difference. So depending on where he is, I'm curious if that'll be a difference as well, because from what I noticed in the, those Native American videos uh, that I watched previously was that it um, it seemed that the further north that they were, um, it seemed that they were getting higher amounts of Asian readings. So we'll just have to see how uh, how his come out. And then being that he has multiple videos from there, you know, We'll, we'll have to see. And I'm hoping he looks into his genetic matches as well. So I'm going to stop my ranting and talking before the video. Uh, but before we do jump in, please be sure to give this a like. That really does help me out. Also, be sure to subscribe and click that bell for notifications on future videos. But with all of that fun stuff said, let's jump into the video. Previously, yes. under life of seatback flow. So I'm guessing this is what I pee into? Oh, thank God that's not the case, cause we I've gotten I've gotten complaints enough about spit takes. <laughs> Imagine if that was how they had to do we had to do it. Spit. Spit. Oh. <laughs> Today I got my DNA results. Yay! Originally I didn't want to do no DNA analysis, but it piqued my interest. All right, so I'm gonna go over my results and see what it says. How old is this video? Okay, March 30th, 2020. He must be on the 23andMe app. I mean, I I don't use 23andMe a whole lot. I have clients who have tested with 23andMe, um, family members who've tested with 23andMe where I have access to their results. But I guess this must be the app, which I never use the app. All right, so this first one is like actually kind of shocking for me in a way that... That 72% of me is Native American. <laughs> okay. It's, it's not much, but it says like 0. 0.4 Filipino ancestry. <laughs> Australian. This is weird. Like, I got a point. Okay, so let's see. 81.2% East Asian and Native American lumped in together. 71.9% um, Native American. Then a lot of real trace results for the Asian, which, you know, just probably not being able to decipher the difference because Native Americans and Asians have a shared ancestry. 1% um, Mongolian where yeah. uh, my kids are 0.7%. Okay, then here's here's the difference. It's 11.6% okay. European. It says I'm Spanish and Portuguese. It says I'm British and Irish and Scandinavian. Skull. Skull. That's okay, why I'm, so that's why I'm a diehard Viking fan. And now I can feel comfortable celebrating on St. Patrick's Day because <laughs> I got a little Irish ancestry. Okay, look, you can see some some of these cousins and it 
And what 23andMe does is when you have cousins with shared ancestry, they show you those. So right now he has one predicted second cousin, another predicted third cousin, predicted third cousin, predicted third cousin. Um, you know, being that he's mostly Native American and then they're predicting these as second, third cousins. If he does his family ancestry, it is very possible he may be able to figure out how he's connected to them or at the very least, if he has multiple relatives that he's able to figure out their shared ancestry. So let's say like this Catherine Pale and Leon Huguet, let's say that they're second cousins to each other. Well, if they're second cousins to each other and he knows how they're related to each other, then he knows that whatever shared ancestry they have, it's not necessarily going to be his same shared ancestry, but he's going to be coming from that same family. So like they may be second cousins to each other or something like that. So they share great grandparents, but then his great grandparent is a sibling to their great grandparents or something like that. Um, based on what he got of uh, 11 point something percent, let's see if we can go back 11.6 percent European. Assuming all of that European is coming from one ancestor, then that would be coming from about a great grandparent. So that would mean that he has a great grandparent of full European ancestry, assuming it's coming from one ancestor. But there is also the possibility it's coming from multiple sides of his family. Um, you know, I don't know where he's from. I don't know his family history, but I do know that there were Native American tribes that it wasn't uncommon for them to mix with people of European ancestry. And so, you know, they would then have a lot of descendants that may have more European ancestry. That's one of the possibilities. It could be coming from one specific ancestor, like a great grandparent, or it could be coming from multiple ones from multiple sides of his family. Irish and Scandinavian skull. Skull. Oh, yeah. That's why I am. It's there because I got a little yeah. Irish ancestry. Uh, this is another kind of weird one is that okay. um, sub-Saharan African um, percentage of that is Nigerian. Interesting. And it says, come here, so your DNA suggests that you had Mexican and Central American ancestry. It is, it is a trace amount, but, um, you know, I constantly get questions about, you know, how can you trust trace amounts or what do you do with trace amounts? And the truth is, is that each trace amount you can judge differently based on that population. And part of what you can do is use uh, what's known as precision recall numbers. I talk about this in a video, um, which I'm going to be linking right up here. So if you want to check that out, it goes into uh, precision recall numbers and basically how that's used to figure out the performance of these DNA tests. So in this case, 1% African, I'm actually going to pull up the white paper and show everyone right now. So I'm going to go to 23 in me and we're going to go check out their white paper on the ethnicity. So let's see. So we have different, they have different white papers. So we're, I'm going to go to the ancestry composition one. And so this gives all of the information. So we're going to go and we're going to find the precision and recall numbers. Um, so this is breaking, this is literally breaking down how they're coming up with these percentages. And so we're going to go down and okay, so here's our precision recall numbers. And you'll notice that different ones have different percentages. And that's because the higher the percentage of precision and recall, which I go into the specifics of how to understand it in that video, I'm not going to do it here. Um, those give you an idea. So the higher the number is, the better they are at figuring that out. Um, one being that they're choosing the right people that have that ancestry and the other being that they're, you know, how many of those people that they're choosing. So with the African, you can see sub-Saharan African, 99%, 99%. So they're really, really confident about doing that. And then if you look at Nigerian, maybe not so as much, but even at 1%, that could be trustworthy, but then you can scroll down and you can look at other ones. So like Northern Asian 63 and 82. So if, if you get North Asian um, percentage on 23 and me, and it's a trace result, it may not be as trustworthy just because it's so much lower, lower and same thing like Minchuri and Mongolian. So, you know, that was one of the things he got the Mongolian. Well, there, there's a, 
you know, it's they're not the greatest with actually picking that up all the time because the numbers are low. So that trace result is not going to be as confident. Um, obviously, with him having very, very strong Native American ancestry, most pretty much all of his Asian readings are pretty pretty likely coming just directly from the Native American. And it's not like he has a recent Asian ancestor, meaning, you know, an Asian ancestor within the past three to 500 years or so. Um, so, but this is a way to get an idea of how to tell which trace results are more confident than others. Now, not all of the websites have white papers and I'm just kind of scrolling through as I'm saying this. So you can see the variation of the numbers. Most of them, a lot of them are going to be in the nineties. You see many that are a hundred percent, but you still will see ones that, you know, are a little bit lower, you know, 73%, 71%, 88%. Um, you know, there's just a lot. So this is kind of how you get more into that nitty gritty of how, how, you know, you can determine the different trace results. And, you know, this isn't foolproof necessarily. It just gives you an idea of when you get trace results, how trustworthy are they? Um, and I should also mention while I'm saying this trace result does not mean that it is insignificant. Trace result just means that it's a small amount. Says, hey, Comanche, you have 75% so I guess, more Neanderthal DNA. Here, let's go back a bit. Of, so that's kind of obvious. Okay, so. That's, that's kind of obvious one. If he's saying that's kind of obvious, I'm guessing that he must come from Mexican ancestry then. Okay, then, like, one of the big reasons that I kind of wanted to do this was to find relatives. Because I know right. I have other brothers and sisters out there. Like All I right. In other video, but I, just want I know I had a lot of people commenting that he goes into things that other people don't on YouTube. So I'm hoping that's going to be at the genetic matches. I'll be able to find them and maybe connect with them or just know that I, yeah. who they are and what they look like, you know? Huh. Okay, I found Totally some understand. Stuff. So some traits that I may have. It says I'm less likely to match a musical pitch. I find that kind of hard because I spent like... 10, 12 years singing at powwows. Now holding a musical pitch like in a regular song and uh, the mainstream media type of song, I am bad. So I could see that. More likely to prefer chocolate over vanilla. Oh my God, I hate vanilla. I like chocolate, I love chocolate. I wanna go to the store and get some chocolate ice cream. Ew, no. Not with Corona out there. So it tells you about your paternal haplo group, uh, which basically talks about your migration and, and where your father's side come from. My ancestors from my father's side ventured out of Eastern Africa. They branched off in diverse Interesting. groups that crossed and recrossed the globe over tens of thousands of years. Some of their migration can be traced through haplo groups, families, and lineages that uh, descend from common ancestor. Your paternal haplo group can reveal the path following by the men in your paternal line. Yeah. So this is talking about his purely paternal line. So his father's 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 father and so up because the Y, y chromosome is passed from father to son. So if you trace up that line, that's where it's going to take you is to Eastern Africa, which is very interesting. But then the cool thing it says you <laughs> share an ancient paternal lineage with Pharaoh Ramesses the third. I think that's how you say it. My mother's haplo group, it says uh your maternal haplo group is D two A two. Traces back to a woman who lived in approximately twenty five hundred years ago. Members of the haplo group are found in both northern and southern Han Han. Chinese populations at low to moderate frequencies. The spread of Han people and culture from northern to southern China was likely driven by welfare and famine in the north. Downside, though, is that one of the main reasons that I wanted to do this was to find uh, brothers and sisters, but it doesn't have them listed that way. People are just listed as relatives, our cousins. But but it allows you to make those connections to people who okay. are related. So okay, he's showing a good more bit. So what he's showing now, twenty three me, 
has a family tree predictor sort of thing. It's not like other family trees that you get at other sites like MyHeritage or Ancestry um, or even Family Tree DNA. Um, although this is probably more similar to the Family Tree DNA one, but not quite. Uh, with 23andMe's, they predict where people are, so it automatically creates a tree. Um, and so it's not always correct. I know when I got mine at first, um, you know, it was very wrong or not mine. It was my sister's, um, but it was very wrong. It was really incorrect. But after a couple of updates, they were able to allow editing and so I could fix it. Um, but this is cool that he's showing this. Some of the people could be who are listed as my cousin or relative could actually be my brother or sister. I don't know because my dad is not in a database and my mother is not in a database. Well, the other thing too is, is that if he's looking specifically for brothers and sisters, when he first said my brothers and sisters, I kind of was assuming that he was saying that in a term of like, you know, my relatives of, you know, my cousins. Um, if he's talking about specifically that he has brothers and sisters that he is looking for, then he would not need to get his parents to test. He would just need to hope that the brothers and sisters test at 23 and me, um, or he needs to put his DNA in more databases because he never know. You never know who's tested in what database you could have a, you know, someone that tested only in 23 and me. And unless you test in 23 and me and get in the database, you won't know that. Um, if he's saying brothers and sisters in what I assumed at first, where he's meaning like his cousins that he didn't know about, then those are cousins of his. He just, you have to do the family tree and genetic genealogy work to figure it out. You need to build your family tree. You need to be, build their family tree. You need to figure out if they're shared cousins. So like if he has a first cousin on here that, um, you know, he and that first cousin are matching this other person at similar amounts, then it's very likely that other person is related to them through their shared ancestry. So his first cousins, they share a set of grandparents. So he'd know to look through his grandparents ancestry. Um, so that's kind of the thing. So, you know, he does a lot of updates. So maybe in some of these updates, he gets further into that kind of stuff. So that's the big conflict right there. So yeah, final results are 81% of me being a Eastern Asian and Native American 11.6% of it is me being European, 1% being Sub-Saharan African, 0.5% of it being South and Central Asia, and also some Mexican heritage, and 5.5% of it being unknown. So my overall review of 23andMe can't be fully complete because I, I know there's people that should be on there who are not on there. But it's a good tool to see where it comes from. Uh, now, if he's saying that there are people on there are there people that should be on there that aren't on there? Meaning if he's saying that he knows relatives of his that have tested on 23 me and he's not matching them, then that means that there is a, an NPE event somewhere in the family tree, a non paternity event, which means that either somewhere in his family line, he has an ancestor in his family tree that truly isn't his ancestor or those relatives he's expecting to be related to one of their ancestors isn't truly related, you know? So that, if that's what he's saying, that could be it. But he may also just be, he may not be saying it necessarily like that. He may just be saying that he was expecting closer matches, but for, he's not getting them and he's not sure why. Do more research on who you are, uh, the migration, the, the traits, and all of these other things that it tells about you. It's, it's all part of knowing thyself, and that's a great thing. That's one of the keys to life, right? Know thyself. But yeah, so that's my 23andMe uh, DNA analysis uh, reveal, and I don't know. Have you done 23andMe? Um, go check, see for related i know but thank y'all for watching thank y'all for commenting thank y'all for subscribing um this has been Simon vlog i'm out of here in three two one peace out nages okay that was a pretty decent video um maybe it's other videos that he goes more into the genetic matches he does touch on some things that other uh youtubers don't always touch on um you know he did go into the paternal and maternal haplo groups a bit um, the paternal one was very interesting tracing to East Africa. I don't really know a whole lot about 
different haplo groups outside of the ones that are in my own family just because there are a lot of haplo groups it's like you know it'd be like trying to know all sorts of different family trees so um you know it'd be interesting to see is that common among native americans or is that an uncommon thing and if that's the case and he does his family tree and looks into his ancestry and is able to trace it back he may find on his father's side a very, very interesting ancestor that he wasn't expecting. Being that it traced to Eastern Africa, but he was getting 1% Sub-Saharan, I wonder if that's where it's coming from. So he may have an African ancestor, which if that if it's 1%, um, that would probably be like a third, fourth, fifth great-grandparent um, of full African ancestry. And that could possibly be someone that he could find with genealogy, depending, you know, there are a lot of limitations for all sorts of people in different areas. And some areas of Mexico do have really good records and others don't necessarily. Um, so that could be something um, to look into if he does his family tree. It'll be interesting to see his follow-up videos. I definitely will try to uh, react to those because he has a lot of them. And, you know, as he gets further into it, he may realize a lot more and maybe he goes more into those genetic matches and figures out how they are related to him. Well, thank you so much for checking out this video. I do hope that you enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to give it a like. That really does help me out. Also, be sure to click right about here if you'd like to subscribe. It is completely free to do so. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Genie Vlogger. I'm the Genie Vlogger. See you in my next video.